So, you want to complete Mortal Journey? The most difficult thing FromSoft has ever made, consisting of 17 bosses back to back. Obviously, a boss rush game mode here, I'm gonna be showing you how to complete Mortal Journey in the easiest way possible, without having any risks, and while also having fun. Obviously, this uh, thing is quite difficult. Obviously, it depends on if you're doing base vitality, depends if you're going full HP, but either way, I'm here to show you how to have fun while doing this, while it's on Charmless and Demon Bell. So, let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. <laughs> Being the first boss in the Mortal Dragon Gauntlet, Gyobo Masataka Oniwa isn't anything but difficult in this challenge. For him, you want to use Dragon Flash with the combination of Sand Throw. The reason being is that both of those items target him and him being the weak point of the of the, the boss fight makes this not as much easier. Every time he gets a stagger or if you have some time in between combos go and go ahead and throw one sand throw but it has to be a jumping one otherwise it's gonna hit the horse and it's not gonna do that much posture damage. Well for Dragon Flash you kinda wanna do it at range you never want to do it when he's up close because then it does like poor damage. It can sometimes give you like poor damage, but yeah. He's not a difficult boss and he can be killed easily. Off to Lady Butterfly. So, Lady Butterfly. A pretty easy boss if you know how to deflect her. So, but watch out if you do the jump. She can sometimes high primary through your attacks, but yeah, this fight is pretty easy. You're gonna want to bait out her combos and parry for as long as you can, because that's what will build her posture bar up the fastest. And yeah, it should be filled up after this combo. Yeah. Now, you want to run over to the Buddha statue, you want to pop the Divine Confetti and the Yashariku Sugar, but you want to do it once her dialogue is over. I messed up the timing a bit here, but you want to carry the Lazulite Shuriken because it does damage through blocks, and you want to keep attacking her until she deflects and watch out what she's going to do next. She can either deflect or jump, like you see where she jumped. You do a charge shoot again there, and that's gonna get her to drop down. And yeah, you, you kind of want to keep doing this loop until she's dead, because the appropriations are not that fun to fight against, and this is like the most risk-free stride you can do on her, while also giving the best reward. So yeah, and that's how you kill Lady Butterfly without any issues. Off to Genichiro now. For Genichiro, you want to carry the umbrella. You can also carry sand throw or axe, whilst also having the sakura dance. So what you're gonna do is you want to keep being aggressive on him. If you see him do like the like, delayed sword swing. Just deflect the first two, you can do a light attack, once you deflect the next two attacks, pop the umbrella and press the block, the deflect button as well, and then you can do another follow up with the umbrella, so you can get into a project force combo. Um, so every time you see him backstep, make sure you're close to him, so you can interrupt the arrow attack, otherwise you can deflect the first three, you can iframe the fourth, and before every phase you want to buff up, however I didn't buff up in the first phase because it requires firecrackers and I don't really like them. Now before second phase you can buff yourself and the fight is pretty easy. You just want to be aggressive, make sure that his posture bar does not go down, also be, get ready to react to his stuff. However, I messed up there and didn't buff myself. I wanted to buff myself here, but couldn't. Didn't have enough time. Plus, I was locked on. 
I can do a sacro dance and do a few sun throws into a chasing slice. And by this point, uh, you can step on him, and then he should do a Mikiri. And if he does another lightning, that's gonna be a blessing. So you want to bait out as many lightnings as possible, and that's how you easily kill Genichiro Ashina. Pretty much, just be aggressive and don't let his posture regen, while also buffing yourself before each phase. Off to the next boss now. So for Guardian Ape, you want to carry Firecrackers, you also want to carry the Spiral Spear, and if you have it, the Empowered Mortal Draw. You're gonna want to run up to him, do two Firecrackers, and a Jumping Mortal Draw into an Empowered Mortal Draw. You want to stay at a somewhat of a distance, you pop another two Firecrackers, and do the, the Jumping Mortal Draw one more time. The reason why we stay at a bit of a range here is because we want to hit its head. The head is the Guardian Ape's hit uh, weak spot, and you want to hit that as frequently as possible because that deals the most amount of posture damage and the regular damage. Now, for the headless bit of this fight, you, you're gonna want to pop the Divine Confetti, but watch out because he can retaliate there. Deflect the first two, you can get two hits in, you can also just chill. And once the combo is over, hit his head twice, do the spear, drag it out, and then do a spiral rush into a chasing slice and another hit. And then just be ready to react to his stuff. But make sure that you have enough spirit emblems for this. And yeah, the fight is pretty much over now. Do another spiral spear, and then he's dead. Pretty easy fight, even if you're doing it casually, so yeah. That's how you easily kill Guardian Knight. Off to the next boss now. So, the Corrupted Monk. For her, you're gonna want to pop out Tanto, Divine Confetti, and the Yashariku, but also make sure you're carrying the Lazulite Axe. Get behind her, do an one delayed swing, and then a follow-up, and do another swing of the axe, and a follow-up. But for the third time, do a regular axe swing and then do a regular attack. And then you're gonna want to get close to her, deflect the first four attacks, iframe the fifth, hit her three times, deflect the upcoming attacks. She has a lot of delayed moves, so just be patient with her. Hit her every time you have the opportunity to, but also know uh, when to play defensively. Every time you jump, you can get a hit in. But make sure you have the umbrella on standby in case something goes wrong. Her combos are so much fun to deflect, but yeah. Always I frame the death swing, because it's a bit delayed and the animation you get can throw you off. And then she can do her gross combos, but yeah. Pretty easy fight as well. Just, you just kind of want to relax a bit and let her do the hard work here. So yeah, off to the next boss now. So for Owl, you want to carry the Shuriken with the Mortal Draw, and you want to pop the Yashariku Sugar as soon as possible. And for him, you want to go for a thrust attack at the end of every single combo of his, and every time he does that potion attack, you can go for a jumping roll draw to get a good chunk of his health and build up partial damage. For him, you want to play a bit more passively than you'd think, especially in such a great boss as him. Um, but yeah, for him, you want to deflect as often as possible whilst going for the biggest chunks of his health as frequently as possible. So thrust attacks and the jumping roll draw, also mid-air shuriken. And every time you have the opportunity, go for a jumping mortal draw. Like I said, after the potion, after a jump, or after the uh, single shuriken with the charge up attack, like the charge up slash. And before getting into his phase two, you want to buff yourself as much as possible. You also want to trigger him to say the 
that special voice line so he can give you some time to back up and whatnot but be careful because the poison has a big hitbox and uncharmless with demon bell you really don't want to be caught in that poison mist and every time you see him go for the smoke attack and get a few hits off but be careful because he can do attacks we can't really see you want to stay in the middle of the arena and you want to be ready for every single combo of his go for as many jumping world draws as possible but be mindful of your emblems and the fight should be over now this is gonna be your first roadblock in the mortal journey gauntlet and yeah this is how you want you can do it flawlessly without any real issues as long as you're careful and as long as you go for big chunks of his health off to the next boss god this fight this is personally my least favorite fight in the whole game due to the second ape coming in the second phase but yeah so for him you want to carry the spiral spear and also the mortal draw you want to pop the both of the buffs on yourself obviously the divine confetti and the shiriku sugar and for him you the first phase it goes normally it's it's an easy first phase you want to go for the the jumping attack so he does the big delayed overhead slam can get two hits in with the spear and then the follow-up as well and be careful watch out when he goes for the screams you want to get him stuck in that corner so he doesn't do anything stupid you can go for hits there but i personally wouldn't go for them because he can retaliate and then give you a weird deflect timing you can get two hits in after the two delayed attacks and then you want to hit him twice again, go for the spear that won't break his stance, you want to do the follow-up so you have 21 emblems, pop the sugar again, go for the death blow, and now you want, you're gonna pay attention to where he goes, so jump back, do a jumping roll draw, and spam uh, the roll button, and go for as many uh, empowered roll draws as possible, because this keeps him stun locked and he can script the kill. And you obviously it does script the kill. After getting six emblems, you want to do the charge follow up as well, and that leaves him dead. Personally, this is the only real fun way and a real uh, way to minimize the risk of this fight, because two monkeys in one room—that is just not fun. But yeah, uh, off to the next boss now. Emma, the gentle blade. For her, you want to buff yourself up the moment you load into her room. You also want to use the leaping kicks with the Suzaku umbrella, and you mostly want to bait out her to do all the work for you. If you see her go for the grab, go use the umbrella and do the follow up from the umbrella. But be careful because she has a lot of delayed swings. On the last attack of that four hit combo, you want to use the umbrella as well. And when you see her go for a sweep, do a leaping kick, but be careful if you see her deflect, because she can do a quick move. But by this point, the fight should be over, and we're going over to the next boss, which is one of my favorite fights in the game. So, H and Ashina, for him, you want to buff immediately at the beginning, deflect the upcoming attack, and focus on doing thrust attacks over all, because he's gonna immediately deflect them. Now for the, when you see him do the delayed uh, thrust attack, you can get a hit in bet between the uh, deflect and the Makiri. But for him you want to get him in this sort of fun loop, uh, deflecting two attacks and then doing a thrust, watching him deflect and whatnot. If you see him go for the Ichimonji, uh, you have to use the umbrella and the follow up of it. Uh, uh, in the thrust as well. When you see him step back, you can either buff yourself, do a dragon flash, or jumping world draw to stagger him out of it. When you see him about to unsheathe the sword, uh, obviously hold the umbrella, hold the umbrella the entire time, and then press the flux when you see the sword blink. And about a second later, you want to press the umbrella again. But in the second phase, you just want to be aggressive. Whenever you see him go, want to go for the Ichimonji attack, hold your umbrella out and pr press the deflect button, so uh, you don't get the afflicted burn status when you see him go for that move just be patient because it's delayed and yeah pretty pretty easy fight but 
can be difficult at times, you just want to be aggressive and don't forget to use leaping kicks. Oh yeah, off to the next boss now. So for a true corrupted monk, for her you want to use the empowered mortal draw with a combination of purple fume spark. That's mostly because of her phase three due to her first two phases being extremely easy. But before getting to her trigger spot, uh, you want to buff yourself both with the Denfai confetti and the Asherik sugar. However, don't do what I did here and don't fight her up front. Get behind her and do some vitality damage. But whenever you get the opportunity to Get the vitality damage, is that attack, go for it, because vitality damage is gonna help you with this fight a lot. But it's your usual monk fight, you, you just kinda relax here and be mindful of her delayed swings. Also look out for any type of attack she throws. Be patient, and the fight is gonna be over quickly. However, it can depend on luck. Like for example, here you'll see my sugar uh, run out because I took my sweet ass time. Whenever you see her go for a jumping attack, uh, just be patient, however, make sure to react due to obvious reasons. And her phase 1 is pretty easy, and her phase 2 is even easier. After getting the first death blow, you want to look for the, that branch that I just jumped on, and then look at where she's gonna spawn, lock onto her, do a jump into a stealth death blow, and once you land, buff yourself, tempt the Asherik sugar so it pops when she stands up. And then deflect the first four attacks. I frame the fifth attack, do a regular attack, don't jump like I did here. Throw uh, firecrackers, a jumping mortal jaw, and the empower follow up. Whenever you see her go for a vomit, do the same thing. Whenever you get the opportunity, pretty much. Like here, for example, I wanted to go for attack, but for whatever reason I didn't. And by this point, you should be out of emblems, and the fight should be over pretty much. Yep. And that's how you defeat True Monk. Not a not a particularly difficult fight. It just can be annoying when when it becomes a run killer. But but by this point, your nerves should be, you know, at an all-time high because of the upcoming boss, which is insane to say the least. But yeah. After the next boss. Al Father, the second major roadblock in the Mortal Journey Gauntlet, and uh, most likely a run killer because this is the hardest base game boss. And for him, you want to stay aggressive but also know uh, when to play defensively. For example, after you see him deflect uh, your attack, you want to play defensively and see what he's gonna do next, that can be either a bunch of slashes, a kick, just depends on him really. But for him you want to focus on dealing vitality damage first before uh, getting his posture up because his posture regen is crazy. You want, like I said, you want to focus on vitality and after a good while his vitality should slow down to the point where you can't just kinda find him regularly without having to worry about uh, posture, but for him, you want to use the Lazulite Shuriken with the Leaping Kicks and buff yourself like whenever you have the opportunity. Whenever you see him go for the sweep, you want to jump back because the Leaping Kicks uh, doesn't follow him fully, uh, and in case uh, he gets blocked by your body so that he cancels out the uh, sweep entirely. And uh, for him, you just want to stay aggressive watch out for the quick double slash after that attack and the, the first phase is done. Well during the phase 2 transition buff yourself with the sugar and the confetti and watch out for where the bird is going to go. If the bird goes straight above you uh, move back a bit and face uh, where, where you saw the bird's face for the last time because he can sometimes go behind you whenever you see him go for the sweep, obviously use leaping kicks. When you see him go for the overhead slam, you can run behind him and do a lot of vitality damage by the time he recovers. When you see him stand in the distance, you, you want to jump over the bird and close a bit of distance so you don't uh, miss out on the Makiri. 
when you say you can go for the shoulder bump into a quick slash you want to do a thrust or if you want instead of thrust you can use an umbrella every time he does a sweep uh, you can go for the leaping kicks and as you can see I actually ran out of my sugar so the next time he teleports uh, you want to buff yourself immediately like the nanosecond you see him teleport away like for instance here he's gonna teleport you buff yourself he got stuck on that uh, pole for whatever reason and the fight by this point should be over but just watch out on the shuriken when he jumps cause that can mess up with your muscle memory but yeah pretty pretty hard fight uh, you need to be careful and you need to be patient while also being aggressive you need a proper balance of those three but yeah off to the next boss now So this one is quite interesting because it's most an endurance test. Demon of Hatred, one of the most disliked fights in the whole game. Uh, for him, you want to carry the Malcontent, Empowered Model Draw, Suza and the Suzaku Umbrella. At the start, you want to buff yourself as, uh, as well as carrying as many emblems as possible with the Tanto. When you see him jump, obviously you want to run back, grapple back in. You can also tank it with the Umbrella, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, there's also the grapple, but when you see him go for the double stomp, make sure that you're ready to deflect the, the right foot from your screen, and then for the left one, use the uh, Suzaku umbrella. Whenever you see him r uh, run away from you after a sweep, uh, you just run to him, because if you're late, that, f that fireball attack can mess you up. And it, it, he doesn't have a lot of moves, even in other phases, he's just a simple fight, he just beat this giant piñata to death. When you see his head rise, be ready and use the umbrella, you're gonna get a good posture and you'll be able to do the follow up as well, but be careful, stay close because he can do uh, the overhead slam two more times. If you're at a bit of a range, so stay as close as possible to him. When you see his hand move back, obviously you want to use the Suzaku to deflect it. The delayed stomp, Suzaku as well, and that's phase 1 done. For phase 2, uh, before that, I, I pop the pellet so I can have a full uh, mini HP bar. You you're just waiting on him to start the phase 2. After he starts the phase 2, he'll jump back. Maybe even do a sweep towards you, but either way, he'll do the he'll do that attack where you can grapple in. When to grapple in, uh, be careful because depending on the range, you can only do a handful of attacks. But it's pretty much the same fight. Whenever you see his hand move, you want to use the umbrella. Whenever you see his feet move, you also want to use the umbrella. Whenever you see his uh, left arm uh, go, obviously in flames. You want to, for, but for example, this one, this attack, you can just run through it. You don't have to worry about it. But like I said, when you see his hand light up, uh, you want to deflect it with the umbrella because that prevents the burn status. You can also strafe it, but personally, I like to deflect the attacks in the game. When he does the backhand and stomp, you can use your sword. But if he does the hand again, you're gonna have to use the umbrella. To prevent obviously to prevent the burn burn status and not to die, but here for instance, uh, when you see his hands move like that, you just want to run in circles around him. That'll make every single one of them miss you. Just keep running and you'll be fine. This, <clears throat> whenever you see him stagger, you can get about five to six hits in, but be careful because right as he like, right as he begins moving again, he can do. God knows what, because it's demon after all. So, phase two is pretty similar to phase one, and by this point, it should be over if you if you're being aggressive this all this time. And now switch to Tanto and the Malcontent. You want to hit him three times after jumping over the attack and iframing the follow up. Do a jumping mortal draw, and then follow it up with an empowered follow up. And once you're done with that, hit him a few times, and once you see him move again, pop the malcontent, and by that point the fire should be gone. When you see this attack, 
you go Suzaku, deflect uh, two upcoming attacks, and then use the Suzaku again. But watch out, because in phase three and two, uh, he can do like a lot of animation cancelling. But when you're not ready to uh, react to that attack, you can get space it. He's gonna begin dancing again. You just run around and. Once he stands, you can get a lot of hits in, like for instance here. He'll jump back, but if you're fast, and if he does this attack, just run to your left and you'll be fine. And he should be dead. Pretty pretty easy fight, but he can, he can be annoying. Just be patient, and remember, it's an endurance test. Yeah, off to the next boss. Genichiro way of tomorrow is anything but difficult for him, you just want to instantly buff yourself at the beginning. Get two hits in, use the purple umbrella, do the follow up. He's gonna break his hyper armor and it's just a regular fight from here. You can use the leaping kicks if you'd like and focus on being aggressive obviously. And you can interrupt the sweep again. Now he's gonna he can do anything. He can do two more follow ups here, but yeah. Pretty easy fight, he's easy to kill, he's anything but spectacular, I just did a little flip there because I thought it was funny. But yeah, for him just use the umbrella, you don't really have to use any combat arts. Just buff yourself, be aggressive and you'll be fine. Well, off to issue now. Ishii and the Sword Saint. Third major roadblock in the Mortal Journey Gauntlet for him, carry the spear, also carry the umbrella with Sakura Dance. And at the beginning, if he goes back and uh, sheathes his sword, deflect when you see his sword blink, and then do the stomp. While you're in the air, obviously you want to attack him as frequently as you can. Once he deflects, be prepared to see what he does next. Whenever he does the Makiri, you want to do an R1 in between the thrust and the Mikiri itself. And then you want to use the spear after doing one hit of your own. For phase 2 transition, you want to iframe the smoke so you can stay close to him, do a bit of damage at the beginning, and force him to do things you want him to. If he steps back and does the overhead slam, be patient, deflect that he's gonna use his gun, and then. If you see him get ready to use the wind attack, use the umbrella and the follow up. However, do, if you see him block, do not attack as he can get a bit funky. If you see him run a bit uh, after doing his swing, don't be shy to use the spear, get some good posture damage in and force him to stay aggroed on you. Like, But here for example, I messed up my umbrella timing so it was just kinda like whatever. And then... For phase 3, pretty much you should consider this a saving grace, because by this point the fight is pretty much over and all you have to do is do a few lightning reversals, get his HP bar down as much as possible, and watch out. If you see him running back, that often means he's going to do the wind attack that's going to be coming up in a bit, but do as many lightning reversals as possible, you want that good, good lightning reversal damage. For example, that's the wind attack I was talking about. For that you want to iframe the first and uh, deflect the second attack. But yeah, every time you do a lightning reversal, you go and do a spear with the follow-up. Yeah, by this point the phase three should be over and you know. So over, you, you managed to get through the third major roadblock in this whole run, now only for the inner bosses, which are an entirely different thing. Yeah. This cutscene is still impressive to this day. Anyway, off to the inner bosses now.
Energon Digital first of the three inner bosses. For him, you want to pop the Ashariku Sugar at the start, deflect the, suck the first two hits of the Sakura Dance, and then do the Umbrella and his follow up. He's pretty much the easier Genichiro fight, at least for me. For him, you just want to stay aggro. He won't use his regular solo attacks a lot, but he'll use the Mikiri, the bow, and the jumping attacks a lot. Also, the delayed uh, flurry attack. But for him, just stay aggroed. Uh, make sure his posture bar doesn't go down, and make sure to buff up before every phase. You want to get this fight as quickly as possible, you don't want to waste any time because your nerves will be at an all time high whenever you see him go for the jump for example it will always be a Mikiri unless it's in phase 3 then he can switch it up with a sweep or his other combos whenever you see him try to pull out the bow don't be shy to attack him however if he goes back obviously stay close to him and hit him so the bow doesn't obviously break your posture and end your run but whenever you see the end of that combo go for a thrust because he can go for a sakura dance and you don't want to be caught in the middle of that because he gets hyper armor but by this point phase 2 should be over uh, buff yourself and in phase 3 use the tanto so you get more emblems for him you obviously sakura dance, umbrella and sand throw spam sand throw once you land hit him, keep hitting him if you see him go back, uh, make sure you are prepared for that. When he goes for the delayed half flurry attack, be patient because that com that attack is super, super, super delayed. But if you see him go next to you and use his bow, be patient. He's going to shoot his bow twice and do a chasing slice. And then he'll go for a Sakura Dance, which means free posture damage. But uh, uh, even after one lightning reversal and a few sun throws, the fight should be over. But yeah. Obviously the hardest boss in the game now. Inner Father. This guy used to beat up my ass a lot. Mostly because of his double move slash Miss Raven attack, but for him you want to use the shuriken and the umbrella. When you see him throw a single shuriken, use the umbrella, and if you hit him and he disappears, be patient. Go back a bit and deflect the Miss Raven, attack him once to see what he does next. If he does another Miss Raven, just be patient. And don't forget to use leaping kicks. If he throws firecrackers, most likely he'll go for a thrust attack, which means free posture damage and the Makiri. For example, as you can see here, he, he's going for a lot of double slashes. He, if he does the shoulder bump into a slash, you can deflect both of those. And then deflect the final part of that combo with your umbrella. But always make sure that you're throwing shurikens at him when he goes at range, so he doesn't get a lot of posture regen. You can get um, some vitality damage in. Yeah, the phase one should be over quickly after buffing yourself with Tanto and um, the Shiriku Sugar. By this point, the phase one should be over. Use the Tanto, buff yourself with the Yashariku, and keep your Yashariku somewhere safe, so you can get um, you can get yourself buffed at the you know at sort of any teleportation of his. But for example, uh, right there you saw me uh, jump. That's mostly because I thought I was gonna go for the jump. If he goes for the bird attack, he you can use the umbrella just in case you're bad at eye framing or deflecting that with your sword. But yeah, use the umbrella every time you see the bird. They try to go for as much vitality damage as possible. Keep throwing shuriken so he stays aggroed on you. When you see him switch. Uh, positions constantly that means he'll either do a, a wind whirl slash or do a sweep where you can use leaping kicks on but pretty much throw as many shurikens as possible be ready to react to his stuff let him finish his combo you want that good good posture damage and yeah, just stay aggressive make sure his posture doesn't regen use leaping kicks whenever there's a sweep also make sure whenever whenever you see him teleport run up to you and then teleport depending on the distance it will depend whether or not he'll do the mist raven combo 
or the delayed swing into shuriken and overhead slam. Both of those have good deflect windows and just stay calm. You got this and by this point you got over the most difficult fight. Inner Ishin. For him, carry the umbrella with the spear, same setup as regular Ishin. At the start you want to hit him a few times. Use the umbrella with the deflect button, so you spend two emblems at the start. Make sure you're using the spear and try not to go for R1 spam because he's coded to catch you. Whenever you see him go for a Mikiri, you can get some good damage in with the spear, but be patient to, and you have to deflect his stuff and use your own thrust attacks, otherwise he can do some animation cancelling like you just saw there. Hit him once, so he's forced to do the smoke. I frame the smoke like with regular Ishin, get some good vitality damage in. Same thing as last time, then he jumps back, use your umbrella, if he does a Mikiri, use a spear. And if he does this attack, jump and do a mid-air deflect when he's right below you. And then prepare the umbrella because he can go either for a Mikiri or the wind attack. If he goes for the wind attack, that's free posture damage with the umbrella. However, I messed up here, I wanted to go for a spear, but instead accidentally triggered my umbrella. When he does that combo, he'll hit twice and then do a few follow-ups with his spear. He can d extend it as well, but for example here he went for the wind attack as well, where you can get one hit in with your sword and then be patient so you can attack with the umbrella after. But yeah, by this point, same with the regular issue, the fight should be over since he's doing lightning reversals. Go for the spear and the chasing size follow-up and stay aggressive on him, he should uh, do more lightning attacks here in a bit. Every time he does a lightning attack, want that good damage in, but, yeah. but after a few lightning reversals, the fight should be over, and yeah, you done it, you beat the most difficult challenge from Substance ever made. I hope my guide helped, and I hope you feel proud of yourself after completing the Mortal Journey Gauntlet. Yeah. Good job! You did it! You're now a gamer certified. You're in the cool gamer club. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all later.